All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's presentation, Opportunities for Direct Sales at Farmers Markets. Tonight's presentation was made possible through Beginning Farmers and Ranchers grant that Rural Action is the lead on and ACENET is a partner in. Um, and this is part of an ongoing series called Whole Farm, Whole Farm Planning. Tonight's presenter is Leslie Schaller. She is the Director of Programs at ACENET. I'm Bailey Grinnert, I'm the Project Coordinator at ACENET. And we're joined tonight by Rural Action Sustainable Agriculture crew, Molly Sowash and Katie Lloyd. So we'll just take a minute and let Rural Action introduce themselves and switch over to Leslie. All right. Hi, everyone. So I'm Molly Sowash. I am Rural Action's Sustainable Agriculture Manager. And I work a lot with Katie around our whole farm planning resources, um, which are kind of a suite of services that we work with beginning farmers on. Um, it includes workshops like this, virtual and on farm, as well as an annual mentoring series in the winter for more business planning uh, topics. And then some other more individualized resources like um, speaking with an accountant or a site visit or working on a, a whole farm or a forest management plan. Um, so we have all kinds of things, including um, workshops that are coming throughout the season uh, like this one. So I'll pass it to Katie. Hi, everybody. I'm Katie. I'm the Beginning Farmer Outreach Assistant. Um, my main task is coordinating resources and tracking farmers through the whole farm series that Molly uh, introduced. And so this is one of those resources that we have available for beginning farmers partnered through ACENET is this webinar series. So I'm very excited that we can host this tonight. Great to see you all. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Katie. So I'm going to flip back just to the tonight's agenda a little bit here. And again, um, we know that we're going to be recording this session today. So uh, if you want to go back and look at it again, it will be available and we'll share that link. Um, we also might have some additional people uh, join us here. Um, I'm Leslie Schaller. I'm the Director of Programs here at ACENET. And I have been working and being a customer at farmers markets for many, 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 many decades here in southeastern Ohio. Um, farmers markets are one of my most incredible loves, as well as working with so many different food and farm entrepreneurs now uh, wearing my ACENET hat. So we're going to maybe do a quick uh, introduction of our attendees. Uh, we, again, might have more folks joining us. Um, but I'm gonna let you guys uh, identify yourself. If you wanna share more information in the chat, um, that would be great. But if you could just please introduce yourself, maybe talk about your business or your farm or the various different hats that you might be wearing uh, within our local food and farm economy. So who would like to go first? Maybe the small muse event owner. Good afternoon. Thank you all for having this um, event. My name is Monique Rogers Dogby. I am with the Small Muse Event Service. Um, we are a um, just a, an event service, and we do charcuterie and some other small, um, you know, party things, but mostly. I was thinking of going to the farmer's market with my charcuterie side of the business, um, because when I do um, sell those, I use lots of local um, products from around Athens County. And so that was my thought about um, going into the farmer's market. Thank you. Great, thanks. Michelle, would you like to share? Give you a minute to unmute. Hopefully you can hear us okay. We're looking just for a short introduction. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps we'll come back to you. How about Karen, would you like to go? 
Yeah. Hey, I'm, yep, I'm Kieran. Um, I am the Community Resources Vista with Rural Actions Sustainable Agriculture Office. Um, I, uh, I don't know. I have my hands in a lot of pots around here, I suppose. Um, I have a, a, some level of involvement with Chester Hill Produce Auction, with um, <clears throat> our farm internship program, with uh, local high schoolers. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a whole bunch of projects that I'm involved with at the moment, yeah. Thanks so much. Uh, Michelle, are you with us? Okay, well, we won't, we won't keep putting you on the spot. So uh, again, please share any information that you'd like us to know uh, in the chat. Um, but I, farmers markets just have an incredible advantage at so many different levels. Um, certainly when we think of a farmer's market, we think of the opportunities for any type of agricultural producer. Um, but farmer's markets are really, I would say, one of that first market opportunities for all sorts of food and farm entrepreneurs. Uh, one of the things that we've discovered over our many years now of operating Ace Next Food Ventures Center is a farmer's market often gives you the opportunity to really test your market, um, to get your brand recognition out there and to have that uh, wonderful one-on-one -on -one connection with your customers. And no matter what your aspirations might be uh, for your food uh, business, a farmer's market is often, I would say, one of the great startup options uh, for many food and farm businesses. So this is a quote I just really love. You know, a farmer's market is the only business I know where you show up with a case of produce and you're in business. You know, that said, I think as many farmer's markets, especially in our region, have grown and maybe gotten a little more sophisticated uh, in their marketing approaches, um, probably showing up uh, without notice is, is less likely these days. But to a large degree, farmers markets are member associations and they, to a large degree, are welcoming with open arms any new food and farm uh, vendors that want to get started. Um, this is a great photograph uh, pre-COVID of the Athens farmers market. Uh, the setup looks a little bit different now in uh, since 2020 and going into 21 and 22. Um, but you can see just from this photograph, you know, how many different vendors um, really have been able to build their businesses at the Athens Farmers Market. Uh, it's expanded over the years. Stay tuned if you haven't uh, followed the Athens Farmers Market on Facebook. Uh, this is the 50th anniversary it got started in 1972. So there's uh, all sorts of different celebrations um, starting out. Uh, the market and many of our markets uh, throughout Southeastern Ohio are still getting opened. Uh, the Athens Farmers Market does uh, run year round and has a indoor and outdoor component uh, during the winter months. So again, probably the flagship market of Southeastern Ohio. Um, but what do we need to become a vendor uh, at a farmer's market? You know, often it's that first step in direct marketing. Uh, you're there because as a business, you want to get to know your customers, but you also want to make some sales. So you want full shopping bags and whatever vehicle um, you're backing up um, to your vendor spot. You want to return with an empty truck or an empty vehicle, you wanna sell as much as you can. You know, so for a farmer's market, it's really that synergy between what customers want and what vendors have. And I think, again, if you look at the Meigs County Mar Farmer's Market, the Athens Farmer's Market, the Lancaster Farmer's Market up in uh, Fairfield County, you know, all of those markets have really over time uh, developed their sort of brand identity, uh, their membership organizations. So their governance is very shaped by the member vendors 
of the farmers markets. And that helps strengthen, I think, the identity. Um, customers want to shop at a farmer's market because they want that connection to local food. They want to know where their food comes from. They want to have that sense of people and place that's so meaning uh, for, to them. Um, I think we've noticed a lot of changes in the recent years since COVID. Um, most of the farmers markets, uh, not just in Ohio, uh, but throughout the nation, have seen increased uh, customer traffic because people feel at home and they feel safe at farmers markets. They know their neighbors, they know that they're voting for their local economy uh, with their dollars. So the challenge sometimes of making farmers markets that are viable for both customers and vendors is really meeting that product mix or that product demand. Um, one of the things that we've done a lot of work on, Rural Action, ACENET, Community Food Initiatives, uh, Live Healthy Appalachia, so many different nonprofit partners uh, have come to the table and worked with markets throughout the region to really celebrate that sense of local. Uh, so many years ago, uh, with the help of the Athens County Convention and Visitors Bureau, we came up with this sort of branding concept, uh, especially in Athens County called the 30 mile meal. And you can see this is a photo from one of the Athens market stands uh, celebrating the fact that we just have an incredible abundance in Southeastern Ohio. So, you know, selling at a farmer's market, it's still marketing. It's still operating a small business. Uh, it might be a toe in the water kind of startup uh, for many folks. It's again, probably a little more comfortable um, being able to talk direct to your customers. You often have the support of other member vendors at a farmer's market, but it still takes some skill. You know, and those skills uh, you are going to probably learn over time. Uh, having that ability to communicate with your customers and really convert that connection um, between customer and into a sale. You want to be there because you want to make money. Uh, your customers want to be there because they like the selection and they like that meaningful connection they have with you as a vendor. So, like any business, some planning is important. You know, thinking about what are some of the activities, publicity, public relations, you know, the materials that you're going to provide, uh, and then just the overall aesthetic or look of your vendor spot. So thinking about your vendor booth as the, the retail store, you know, that's your front um, to making a sale uh, with your customer. So brand identity over time is really important, both for the market and for the individual uh, vendors. Uh, another great photograph of Margie Shu, one of our longtime Athens Farmers Market vendors, uh, thoroughly committed, has served on the executive committee of the membership board for years. In fact, she just started a, another term uh, in March. So many of the vendors oftentimes will have a product mix and thinking about what your customers need and how your products maybe match those customer needs is important. So you'll notice uh, one of the signage uh, uh, on the tabletop that Margie has is about SNAP benefits. Um, we have pretty much everyone I would say coming to the Athens Farmers Market from every social economic, socially, you know, economic status. Uh, we have uh, moms maybe using SNAP. Uh, we have folks using produce perks. We have folks of all income levels maybe doing all their grocery shopping uh, at the farmers market because of the selection. So thinking oftentimes as you get started. How am I being customer focused? What do I know about this market? What do I know about other vendors? So spending some time really in preparation of maybe not a full-fledged market plan, 
but really thinking about those uh, aspects, sort of that strategy around developing your marketing approach. Um, you know, that means defining your target customers. What are you selling? Who cares about what you're selling? What, what gaps or what needs are you fulfilling? So really understanding your customer needs and interests, identifying maybe what your product um, is unique, uh, differentiates maybe from other vendors at the market. Um, if you're selling tomatoes and there's 10 other uh, vendors selling tomatoes, how are your tomatoes different? How are you positioning or identifying um, how you are maybe different? Uh, it's not so much thinking about per se the competitive analysis, but making sure that with regards to your product selection, maybe even with your pricing, um, you're positioning yourself so that your vendor business can thrive within the wide selection of the market uh, vendors. Um, so positioning the farmer's market and the vendor businesses within it. Um, one of the real struggles of farmer's market associations is having enough variety. Um, I think we all know that it's sometimes challenging to find enough produce vendors or fruit vendors to populate a farmer's market. Um, the popularity of the Athens farmer's market, uh, the fact that it has this large customer base, almost 3,000 to 3,200 shoppers uh, on a Saturday morning, especially spring through fall, um, it's really a great opportunity to get started there but it also can be challenging to get some of the other smaller markets throughout Southeastern Ohio with an appropriate vendor mix. It's kind of that chicken and egg challenge. Um, is there enough diversity of vendors and products uh, to create enough diversity and attraction for customers? So it's all about making that customer connection. And we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the ways that in with affordable strategies, you can really reach out uh, and develop that communication, that relationship with your market vendors. Um, the Lancaster Farmers Market, uh, they're right next door to the Keller Market House, which is a year round sort of bricks and mortar uh, farmers market. So there's great synergy uh, between the two markets. Uh, they're just getting ready to open a lot of our smaller seasonal markets typically have opening days in May and then run through uh, October, sometimes even into November. So looking at how the market association is uh, promoting themselves and how you fit in that picture, understanding uh, who their customers are, you know, really getting, um, I would say your research done uh, if you're thinking about selling at a farmer's market, um, travel around, you know, it's sort of like window shopping even um, and visiting the different markets because they all have in many ways their own personalities, their own unique identities. So if you're just getting started, you know, there's a lot of challenges uh, of any kind of direct sales. So thinking about, you know, what level of production do you have? You know, you might have limited sales volume uh, at first because you don't have a wide selection of different products. If you're a farmer, uh, we all know that there's a lot of risks with agricultural production. Um, there's a lot of seasonality issues. Um, we were talking early on when we many of us got on the call that here is, it is April 19th and we had uh, snow flurries this morning. Um, so weather, you know, has a lot of effects on not just what we're producing or selling, uh, but it also has effects on customer attendance. Uh, we've had some pretty sketchy uh, Saturday weather here in March and April um, that might dissuade uh, some of our uh, customers because they don't want to uh, go out when it's in the 30s or 40s to an open air market. So thinking about how weather affects not just your ability to produce your product, but also how it might affect um, 
uh, a, a market day. So thinking about what your needs are, you know, do you have uh, a pop-up tent? Do you need to make sure that you have uh, additional uh, weight so that your tent doesn't fly up? Uh, we just had a, a tent go aloft a couple of weeks ago at the Athens Farmers Market, which is incredibly scary and uh, dangerous, obviously to both vendors and customers. Um, but it might be having weights on your table to hold down marketing materials. So, you know, just thinking about um, all the different weather conditions out there and how it might uh, really affect your ability as a vendor to connect to your customers. And then it seems like, oh, you know, that quote earlier, um, I just need to show up and I'll be able to make some money selling at the farmer's market. Um, but it truly is a time commitment. Uh, most farmers market associations, they want to know that you're going to be a reliable vendor, uh, that you're gonna commit to X number of market days. Uh, on your part, you really need to do the reality check with yourself, you know, is this time commitment something I can manage? Uh, do I have the, the time to do the preparation? Uh, the market might run from nine to noon, um, but does that mean I need to get up at 4 a.m. and do my harvesting and my packing and then load up my truck and then drive to the market and be there uh, at least an hour in advance, maybe even two hours in advance of the start time of the market. Um, and then at the end of the day, you've got to get ready to pack up. Um, so it's, it can be a huge commitment of time. Uh, market hours vary. Uh, our Athens Farmers Market might be a little bit shorter in the duration, um, but it still could be maybe close to a six or seven hour a day commitment to be able to sell on a Saturday morning. And then thinking about, you know, what your retail sales skills are. Uh, retail sales to a large degree, I always say is kind of a performance art. So you might be an introvert <laughs> six days out of the week, uh, but when you show up at the Athens Farmers Market, um, you really need to connect with your customers. And that means standing up, that means smiling. Uh, that means building a relationship with your loyal customers, knowing their names, knowing what they like, um, maybe introducing new products or new uh, things that you're growing uh, to them because uh, you've really started to develop an understanding of what their personal tastes are. And then it doesn't matter if it's fruit or if it's livestock or if it's produce or if it's culinary herbs or your uh, cottage food um, bakery, you know, all of that um, is really part of the time commitment that you need to make. Uh, farming, we all know, um, is a, a challenging occupation. Um, many of the farmers selling at farmer's markets uh, also have a day job. Um, or have a partner perhaps that has a day job to be able to support the overall farm operation. So sales volume uh, can be a little tricky. You know, you wanna make sure that if you're gonna be at a farmer's market from nine until noon, um, you don't wanna run out of your product too early. You don't wanna have empty baskets uh, by 10.30. You know, customers who maybe like to sleep in a little bit later and who aren't going to arrive at the market until 11, um, they're going to be totally bummed out if they've missed um, some of the uh, product lines that you're selling. Uh, that said, you know, you've also got to maybe create some expectations with your customers. You know, if you have a limited amount of asparagus at the early part of the season, or it's the first week of strawberry season or any berry season, um, encouraging maybe even on social media um, for folks to come early, you know, so that you try and um, maybe use your limited volumes at time as a way to 
uh, pique people's interest and maybe get them out a little bit faster. But I think successful market vendors, uh, uh, to the right, uh, we have a, a great picture of Cherry Orchards. Um, I love the way that they set up uh, their vendor uh, spot, um, you know, multi-tiered. Uh, you see all their produce and all their fruit. Uh, there's a lot of space for customers to walk around. Uh, the way they set it up is kind of a, a U-shaped uh, vending booth. And you get that sense of abundance. Um, you'll also notice if you visit with any of our produce vendors and, and fruit vendors at the Athens Farmers Market, a lot of times they're adding um, more inventory or more produce as they make sales uh, throughout the morning as well. So not just having everything set up on your table, maybe when you first open up, um, but being able to replenish uh, your stock as the day goes on. You know, so thinking about that sales volume, um, uh, we have, uh, you know, a lot of different folks who are selling some sort of prepared food product, bakery product, um, getting a sense from your customers, you know, what's their favorite flavor of pie? Do I need more apple and cherry pies? Because those are the two big sellers at the farmer's market. So really taking stock of uh, what your sales volume is, uh, keeping, you know, even if it's just a little notebook, um, I certainly encourage people to use Excel spreadsheets to kind of uh, track what their sales are, but what some of their individual product sales are as well, so that you get a sense of what's popular, um, what's moving. And then obviously a lot of produce, seasonal, uh, making sure that at peak seasons, especially in the early spring, uh, when summer vegetables and fruit starts to peak, you know, do you have uh, the appropriate volume of product uh, to be able to make it through uh, that farmer's market day? Welcome to those folks who are joining us. Um, we are recording this session. So if you've missed a few slides of this presentation, never fear, you can go back um, and follow uh, the uh, webinar as well at a later date. Um, and then seasonality, you know, making sure that you're maybe growing stuff, processing stuff, producing stuff, baking stuff that really communicates that sense of seasonality. Um, so this type of year, time of year, you know, a lot of people are really getting excited about the first spring produce that's coming out. Um, later in the year, in the fall, you might wanna extend your vending season by having a, a larger crop, perhaps, of some of the seasonal vegetables, you know, pumpkins, obviously, squash, root vegetables. Um, what's gonna help take you into uh, maybe six months or even nine months of being able to, to sell agricultural items at a farmer's market. Um, there might be other things that you're doing on your farm as well. Um, we have folks, I know um, Katie can probably talk about uh, the beekeepers we have in Southeastern Ohio. We have a number of farmers who also tap um, for maple syrup. Um, so you'll notice that if you go to any market, uh, there are vendors who try and extend the season um, by having a larger diversity of products. It might be different produce from spring through fall. It might be the creation or addition of some value added products. And then these are my great weather photos. These are really old photos, I think from about uh, 12 or 15 years ago at the Athens Farmers Market. Uh, this is before we went in uh, inside the mall and had a lease agreement with the mall owners. Um, but you can see that, I mean, vendors, you know, they wanna make those connections with their customers. Um, so whether it's, I guess the postal service uh, motto, um, people are as vendors out and about um, trying to, 
make some sales no matter what the weather. Um, and then this is a great um, photograph to the right of a, one of our former Athens farmers market vendors. Um, Heaven's Oven was this great bakery. And you can see B, the owner, is holding on to the top of her uh, uh, pop-up tent so that it doesn't go aloft. So uh, vendors are very committed and oftentimes we have an equal commitment um, from our customers. So thinking about that time commitment, no matter whether you're a farmer, whether you're a, another type of uh, vendor at a farmer's market, it might be prepared foods, it might be bakery, uh, you might be a livestock farmer uh, selling meat items, you know, sort of balancing what you want to accomplish with your farmer's market sales and production. Um, these are some of our wonderful farmers of vest berries and produce. Um, and it's a lot of work, you know, there's planting strawberries, there's harvesting uh, throughout the spring and summer and fall, and then there's making that connection. Um, really offering, you know, optimum customer service uh, when you're at the farmer's market, uh, communicating with your customers. Uh, and having fun. Uh, again, um, this is another photo from the archives. It's John from Avalanche Pizza. Uh, his uh, vendor booth has grown over the years. It's much larger now at the Athens Farmer's Market. Um, but having fun. You know, that's part of the charm of uh, what customers are interested in uh, coming to a farmer's market. They want that shopping experience, not just to be able to purchase local food, but to really make um, the connection to the folks that are producing it. Uh, a more recent photo of Mitch uh, from Mitch's Produce down in Middleport, Ohio. Uh, this is a photograph uh, with Mitch and his granddaughter at the Meigs County Farmer's Market uh, last summer. And I love this photo because it tells the story of being customer focused and really connecting with your customers. So Mitch has grown all sorts of melons and uh, different uh, agricultural products throughout the years. He also sources from some of his uh, neighbors, um, but his granddaughter had this great idea. It's like, why don't I make a prepared food product um, and sell that direct to customers at the Meigs County Farmers Market? So the refreshing fruit cups were born from some of the produce uh, that Mitch's produce was growing. And then what are the top selling items? Um, this is pretty much conventional wisdom. Uh, if you read any sort of blogs or go to any of the great resource libraries about farmer's markets, um, there's pretty much five top selling items in terms of produce. And tomatoes, probably first and foremost, are what people are shopping for. Uh, if you look at any of our producers, vendors, at any of our regional markets, you'll see that we have a lot of folks growing tomatoes, um, usually they're growing uh, all sorts of varieties of produce. You know, I think of Larry and Kim Cowdery. Um, you'll look at their summertime table at the Athens Farmers Market, and it's all sorts of luscious summer vegetables, many different choices of tomatoes. And I think, um, you know, that's what people are looking for as customers is what's the variety. So I might buy a certain type of tomato from one vendor, and then I might buy some heirloom tomatoes from another vendor. You know, I might buy a box of canners because I'm gonna go home and do some home canning uh, over the week uh, or over the weekend. So, you know, thinking about what those top selling items are, if it's something that you're interested in raising, um, these are some of those items. So tomatoes, Sweet corn, again, you know, limited harvest season. Uh, corn will just fly off uh, the vendors' booths, tables, uh, whenever it is in season. And oftentimes we hear that a lot of folks who might be less loyal customers at farmers markets, uh, they're going to want to come to a farmers market for some of these five top items. So you might not see them the rest of the year 
but you'll see them at the peak tomato season, the peak corn season. You'll see them come uh, for things like melons again, you know, uh, lots of different varieties. More folks are, are looking for different sort of niche or heirloom uh, seed varieties now. Um, the more selection you can provide, the better, uh, especially during COVID. Um, so many people uh, reconnect it uh, to their home cooking, I think, personalities. Uh, so people are definitely looking at farmers markets uh, for a wider selection, things that they might not be able to find at the grocery store. And then tree fruit is another one of those popular top five items. So whether it's apples or peaches, I think of Wagner's Fruit Farm, one of our oldest vendors at the Athens Farmers Market. I mean, they have so many different varieties of peaches. Uh, again, a great photograph of cherry orchards. Um, they're set up uh, lots of different uh, options from apples uh, to pears to all sorts of different tree fruit is available. And then no surprise that other top selling item is berries. And I think you can talk to probably any farmer's market manager, certainly across Ohio, um, probably throughout central Appalachia. And one of the things that all market associations are looking for are more people who grow berries. Um, even at the Athens farmer's market with some of the higher volume uh, berry producers uh, we have as members, um, we can be out of berries uh, by 10 o'clock, 1030. You know, so get there early uh, to make sure that you get your strawberries, your blackberries, your raspberries, your blueberries, you know, some of the other more unusual berries that people are growing, uh, even gooseberries. And then what are some of those other seasonal specialties? You know, people um, go to farmers markets, oftentimes driven um, maybe by wanting to purchase certain items like corn or tomatoes or berries. Um, but uh, what other seasonal items can you catch their fancy with? Um, I love the fact that we have ramps and all sorts of ramp products. So Integration Acres, you know, uh, provides us with ramp tofu pasta. Where else on planet Earth but the Athens Farmer's Market can you buy ramp tofu pasta? I would question if it's a product available anywhere else. Um, and then ramp crackers. So this is a great uh, example of how different producers are partnering. So you have Chris Schmiel of Integration Acres and you have Crumbs Bakery, a uh, worker-owned business that actually operates out of Ace Nuts Food Ventures Center. And they've come up with these unique products. Um, sometimes they're limited. Um, it's not like we can you know, harvest a gazillion tons of ramps every season. Um, so if you're craving your ramp crackers, um, you need to really know when they're going to be available throughout the year. And then it's, you know, aside from produce, aside from value added products, uh, there's different opportunities for um, bundling, maybe unique uh, strains of vegetables, varieties of vegetables. I think of, you know, the popularity now of some of the the smaller and varietal of carrots, um, sunflowers, all sorts of different horticultural um, products from bedding plants at the beginning of the season uh, to culinary herbs to flower bouquets. And then we're blessed in this region uh, with so many different uh, folks operating under the cottage food regs here in the state of Ohio. Obviously, we have lots of different local food processors and manufacturers. So there's just a lot of different choices that are now available at the farmer's market. And I have to give a big shout out um, to even some of our businesses like Shagbark Seed and Mill. You know, you can buy their products now in Athens on the shelves in Kroger or Siemens or Kindred Market or you can buy them, you know, all over um, beyond our Athens market, but they're still committed to the Athens farmers market and they're still vending there. It's important for them 
um, to remain a, a member and really contribute um, to the, the market and what they've learned uh, as they've grown their business. And then variety, boy, it's key. I should have some photographs of all our livestock operators, um, but having a selection of dairy products, you know, we have Creekside Farm uh, uh, at the Athens Farmers Market providing uh, a variety of drinkable uh, goat milk yogurts. We have all sorts of different cheeses uh, produced from uh, different livestock in the region. So Laurel Valley down in Gallia County, um, we mentioned Integration Acres, also incredible artisanal cheese. And then bakery, um, just incredible selection. Uh, farmers markets really benefit from folks who are doing uh, locally produced bakery and confection products. Uh, we see more and more food truck operators now uh, getting their start selling at farmer's markets. So the more product diversity, and this is what's really important um, when you're getting started as a vendor or when you're thinking about selling direct is really going out and doing that research and seeing what's available uh, at different farmers markets. Um, always a lot of photographs from the Athens farmers market because we have such a wide diversity of uh, different food entrepreneurs. So plants and flowers, uh, you know, a lot of folks are doing um, prepared bouquets, you know, easy grab and go uh, for the shopper at the market, uh, having beautiful displays set up at your booth. Uh, another photograph here of companion plants, uh, also selling at the Athens Farmers Market now for many decades. So looking at the variety of different um, farmers markets, you know, I just have a, a few of the logos. Uh, getting to know those markets um, is really important. Um, I'm always amazed at how many uh, producers from southeastern Ohio uh, go up and sell into some of the Columbus farmers markets as well. So, you know, you can be a member at multiple farmers markets. Uh, there are folks who sell on Saturday mornings at both the Athens farmers market and the Meigs County farmers market. If you have enough family members who can uh, uh, sell at both uh, markets or, or uh, maybe friends who are going to help you out, you know, that's an option as well. So, you know, what can research and analysis tell you? Well, understanding what your target market is, you know, what products are best for you to introduce if you're starting out selling direct at a farmer's market. How do you position what you're selling, uh, what you're marketing uh, may be different from the other vendors who are more established within that market association. And then what do you bring? What's special? You know, maybe it's your customer service skills. Maybe it's the uniqueness of the types of vegetables you're growing. Um, but how are you communicating uh, that to your customers? How are you making that person-to-person um, -person connection? So whether you're ready to do kind of a one-page or a couple-page uh, business plans or market plan, you know, really as you prepare to, to launch direct sales at a farmer's market, um, you should have some goals set, um, even the simplest of strategies, uh, getting started, really identifying some of those uh, pieces that we went through, you know, what kind of time commitment um, is realistic for you to make? Um, what are some of the tasks and responsibilities? So maybe it's a couple of family members that you're going to work with um, to uh, develop the direct sales at a farmer's market. Well, what are your individual responsibilities? Who does what? You know, again, thinking about those time commitments are, are pretty crucial. And then does that market meet your goals? Uh, we had some folks who had been longtime vendors at the Athens Farmer's Market. Um, that were um, not from Athens County. Uh, they have always loved the Athens Farmers Market, but when they saw some of the new options like the Meigs County Farmers Market get started in the last couple of years, they decided, well, 
a few less vendors, maybe different competition. Um, maybe I can uh, really still attract some of the same customers uh, and maybe that market is the better one um, for me to connect with. So thinking about you know, where your buyers live and work. Uh, a great example, Mitch's Produce, again, a longtime vendor at the Athens Farmers Market. Um, but Mitch is from Middleport and has his own retail operation, his own farm store in Middleport. So it was kind of a no brainer for him uh, to gravitate to the Meigs County market. Um, he's well known in that community. Uh, if anything, he's probably maybe increased his sales uh, selling at the Meigs market. Plus it's an easier travel time for him. So thinking about that commitment, as we mentioned earlier to what it's like to set up and vend and then tear down and pack up and you know the travel time, uh, again, is part of that time commitment. So why do you want you know, to shop at that? Why do you think you have customers that want to shop at that farmer's market? So again, can't say enough, go out, hang out, look at different farmer's markets. And then I'm just going to go through um, some of this kind of basic uh, getting started, thinking about, you know, how do I figure out what all I need to do to start vending? Um, ACENET, and this will be the shameless sort of infomercial for ACENET. Uh, we have an incredible staff. You've met Bailey uh, on this webinar, um, but there are many other staff members here. Um, if you're thinking that you need some help, maybe even determining what your business name or farm name is. Do you need some help? Um, with the development of a logo. Um, you know, we can help you think about how you could maybe do it yourself with different software programs like Canva, or maybe you need some input. Uh, we have an incredible um, gal on our staff, uh, Delia, who is our multimedia designer. So for a very reasonable intake fee, uh, with ASNET and some um, very inexpensive uh, services. If there is help that you need, um, taking additional webinars, getting one-on-one -on -one technical assistance, you know, a lot of that is available for free or for uh, very minimalist uh, uh, service fees. So I would say spend some time on acenetworks.org. Uh, you can see some of our information in terms of pricing, some of the services we offer. Um, but we can help you with social media. You know, we're not website designers, but we can maybe refer you to some of our clients who are when you're ready um, to make that level of investment. We can help you think about what content you might need for your website or social media or print materials. Um, we also work with a lot of different I would say service providers that can maybe help you think through um, what are some of the printing expenses you might want to incur. You know, maybe it's just getting some signage and some business cards uh, set up first. Um, so we can we can connect you and provide resources, uh, whether it's figuring out what packaging you might need or what printing or what signage, um, and then. One of the great things I think about farmers markets is they attract what we like to refer to as earned media. Um, for those of you who might still read the Athens Messenger, um, John Haley, uh, the staff photographer at the Messenger for, I don't know, maybe 30 years, um, pretty much every couple of weeks, John will have photographs of vendors at the Athens farmers market. Um, most of, uh, I would say, the, the sort of happy media stories that we see in any of our local newspapers or WOUB um, radio or the television affiliate, you know, will center on different aspects of what's happening at farmers markets. So there might be a spring story, a summer story, a fall story. Uh, if anything, if you do determine that you would like to become a, a member at one of the uh, area farmers markets. Um, many of them are working and supporting different media campaigns, whether it's doing press releases 
uh, to attract uh, more coverage. So, you know, thinking about logos, we can help you through all this. You know, do you want to work with a designer? Do you want to start with clip art? Maybe you have something already prepared um, that we can provide feedback. Um, and then, you know, how do you ultimately decide um, what kind of marketing materials you want to use? Um, so if you need some help uh, with that part of uh, setting up your marketing goals, coming up with your marketing strategy, especially when it comes to uh, what we would consider some of the style guide aspects of creating your brand, um, again, we are here to help. So making that customer connection, you know, what's the most effective means? Uh, if you look at a lot of farmers markets, you'll see that many vendors have uh, signage that they've developed over time. You know, folks might have information even on their vehicles uh, that builds their brand, um, but you need to keep your budget in mind. If you're just getting started, uh, there's a lot of uh, low cost or no cost ways to develop that brand, um, figure out how to do uh, some of that marketing um, just in the early stages. But we like to say, you know, keep it simple and stay on message. You know, don't confuse your customers, especially as they're just starting to get to know you. So signage, again, you know, lots of different examples from some of the area farmers markets. Um, there's certainly ways to create branded merchandise. You know, this might not be something you're doing in your first year as a farmers market vendor, um, but there's definitely ways to, to think about it. And then predicting, you know, your sales. Uh, again, these are strategies we can help you with. Um, pricing uh, can be pretty challenging. Uh, you also want to look at maybe other uh, national or regional websites. There's tons of farmers market resources out there. Uh, I probably should have added it to a slide, um, but one of our favorites is the Farmers Market Coalition. They have a great resource library. Um, so if you're struggling with how to price your product, maybe how to do introductory uh, product, uh, pricing when you're first getting started. Uh, again, we have business counselors here at ACENET. And I'm sure, you know, Katie and Molly um, would chime in and help on some of this as well. So just I'm looking at the, the time. I'm trying to get through this so we have time for questions. Um, you know, we do a lot of more in-depth webinars on uh, social media, you know, but there's just so many um, different ways that you can start to communicate with your customers from day one. You know, whether it's Facebook, um, whether it's using Instagram, uh, so many of us now have uh, powerful phones, so to speak, uh, that can take great photographs. Um, again, you know, Bailey and Delia are here uh, at on the ACENET staff um, that can help you. Um, even thinking about, you know, what, what should my content be if I'm going to start uh, Facebook and Instagram? Um, we can help you with those marketing strategies. Uh, obviously, for Instagram, the photo tells the story. Um, if you're interested on future topics, you know, we can do a deeper dive on any of these. Uh, Twitter and Pinterest, we see more and more market associations as well as individual farmers market vendors uh, using these tools as well. Although I would say um, to a large degree, it's still Facebook. And now I would say uh, headed towards Instagram. But then, you know, there's more and more examples now of TikTok um, for farmers markets as well. So earned media, talked a little bit about this, you know, press releases, uh, connecting with local reporters. Um, oftentimes people find out about uh, your business, maybe you're a new vendor at a farmer's market through your social media posts. Um, and then making sure that if you're using social media, you're being responsible and responding um, in, a, in a 
pretty quick way. Um, you know, it's important that if someone is commenting one way or the other, pro or con, uh, on your Facebook page that you're responding. So, you know, just a lot of different ways uh, to use ASNAP to work with the staff at Rural Action um, for some of these needs. And if you'd like to learn more about ASNAP, again, here's ways to connect with us. Uh, our website has a lot of different information in terms of our services. You might wanna follow our social media uh, certainly, it's one of the ways that we communicate um, upcoming workshops and webinars, although I'm sure um, through this partnership with Rural Action and ACENET, uh, there'll be uh, many more workshops um, coming up over the next year or couple years. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen so I can hopefully see some folks again, or at least see their names. Um, if you'd like to turn your video on. Um, that would be great if you have a, a connection that allows you to do that. I know a lot of folks, depending on um, what part of rural southeastern Ohio you're in, <laughs> sometimes it's not great to have both your audio and your video on. Um, but it would be wonderful either in the chat or to unmute yourself and uh, tell us, you know, give us some feedback, ask some questions. So in terms of selling at the different farmers markets, if you go to the Athens farmers market or the Meigs County farmers market, pretty much all of their websites uh, have sort of the policies and procedures to become a member vendor. Uh, there's different fees and uh, there's different uh, commitments in terms of what it would take to, to get a booth. So. AthensFarmersMarket.org. And I think, I don't know if I have the Meigs County Farmers Market memorized. I think it's Meigs County Farmers Market.org as well. Any other questions? I know I zip zip. I'm a fast talker. Um. Yes, so I, I do have a, actually have a question. Um, so um, maybe slightly unrelated, but if you're coming at this from the perspective of a farmer's market organizer, what are just some basic, good basic resources that farmer's markets can provide um, merchants um, I, I remember you, like for instance, I remember you specifically mentioning sort of having to, when preparing your stand, you should like, for instance, um, think about weighing down your tent in case the weather is bad. Um, in terms of things like that, like what are some good sort of basic resources that you find to be helpful when farmers markets are able, you know, able to step in and provide resources like that? Like, or can you think of any good examples of basic resources like that? Yeah, that's a great question. There's, um, there's a lot of different um, farmers market associations that will have uh, even sort of re resource links. Um, I mean, and full disclosure, I was a long time and early board member of the farmers market uh, coalition. Um, I would say it's one of the best websites um, looking at the Athens Farmers Market, and I, I think Molly or somebody just put the website in the chat, you know, looking at their policies and procedures, and it gives you sort of a, a rights and responsibilities of what the market offers to vendors and what the expectations of vendors are to become market, men, you know, members. Um, and each market will have slightly different policies and procedures. Um, one of the things that we've done with the formation of farmers markets is help sort of farmers market managers think about what it would take to start a market. Um, you know, who's the uh, 
maybe the founding vendors of a market association, how to recruit those vendors. Um, th we do a variety of different, more targeted workshops. And then one of the workshops that has always been pretty popular uh, for us in the early stages of farmers market associations um, is helping vendors really with that kind of brand identity. So here's best practices as to how to set your booth up. Um, you know, do you want to use a tablecloth? What's your style? You know, are you going to have your produce in wooden boxes? Are you going to have your produce in plastic containers? You know, you don't, uh, thinking about the aesthetics uh, is really important. So thinking again, you know, the photographs, for instance, of cherry orchards and how they have those tiers and how they have a U-shaped um, booth set up for customers to walk around. It, again, gives that sense of abundance. So we do a lot of workshops just on sort of the aesthetics of booth design. Um, and then we do a lot of workshops on sort of the financial management. Um, for both market associations and for individual vendors. That's great, thank you. And that was one of the things I was hoping <laughs> to get your feedback. We have tons of topics and titles in terms of workshops we can do. Um, but I think what we wanna make sure both from the rural action feedback as well as the uh, participants in the whole farm planning, or just folks, at, you know, interested in this work overall, you know, tell us what, what some, maybe some of those learning needs and peer exchange needs are. One thing that's come up um, is brand identity, like you just said, as well as like logo design. And I'm kind of wondering if that's better suited to one-on-one -on -one technical assistance or if there's value in the group setting webinar workshop? I think both, all of the above. Um, we have a contract right now with the West Virginia Farmers Market Association and we are uh, presenters um, with a, a variety of other presenters about some of the compliance issues for farmers markets. But the way those days are getting divvied up, it's sort of a six hour workshop day, is we do some presentations in the morning and then we do one on one um, sort of clinics uh, with the individual vendors. So people might have the beginnings of a logo or maybe they have a logo and a label um, that they've used for a couple of years. And then, you know, we make some suggestions um, and can work through uh, what their needs might be. We're, I would say here at ACENET, because we've worked with small businesses um, for so, so, so many years, um, we're very fixated on getting started, even, even from a, an affordable point of view with a strategy around your brand building. So it's not like you have to have the super complicated marketing plan, um, but just thinking about what's the name of my business? What fonts do I want to use? Um, what colors work well? Um, if I need to print labels, um, what's an affordable way for me to do that? I mean, you can still have incredibly gorgeous labels just printed easily on a color printer on Avery, you know, different stock size Avery labels. Um, so you can be competitive and still be affordable in those early stages of launching your business. And we will help you. So please feel free to give us more ideas about topics. Um, uh, we have a big list and I know Bailey and Chris and Delia and I, you know, have, will continue to brainstorm um, but depending on, you know, what's most important, what are higher priority topics, um, we're totally flexible. And as we said at the beginning, uh, this has been recorded, so these links will be available.
and I don't know, maybe Bailey, Katie, Molly, do you want to kind of wrap us up? Sure. If there's no more questions, we can end things. I'll stop recording. Uh, Molly, Katie, do you guys have anything else to add on the rural action side of things? Katie, do you want to share about some of the upcoming workshops we have, both in person and virtually? Absolutely. So as far as the next ACENET workshop goes, that um, Eventbrite is live. I can link it in the chat and then we can also send it in the follow-up email with the recording. Um, but that is titled Food Regulations and Shared Use Kitchens. And that is June 14th. We also have a whole farm um, field day visit to Cherokee Bison Ranch on June 18th coming up. Um, so those are forthcoming. And then we also have a farm bill uh, webinar, one-stop shop, and that is May 25th, correct, Molly? Yes, so that will be coming up as well. But again, we'll send links to the registration for the next ACENET in, in the email with a recording of this seminar. So, Yeah, and I just put a just an email list uh, URL in the chat for folks who want to be emailed about what upcoming workshops we have from Sustainable Ag, which involves partnerships with ACENET, as well as United Plant Savers and lots, lots of individual farmer mentors. Thanks, all. Yeah, thanks everybody for joining. Thanks, Leslie. That was a great presentation. I know I learned a lot. Good. And I think people know this about me, but it's always really important to acknowledge just the amazing farmers and food entrepreneurs that we have. So I always like to make sure that they get highlighted um, with photographs and all these presentations. All right, well, nobody has any more questions. I'm gonna end the meeting and end recording. Thank you all for joining. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Thanks for coming.